this week I, I've, I've been overcome by the concept um, of community. Community has been something that, um, that I've long valued, that frankly that I've, I would even attribute the majority of my transformation over the past, man, five, six years to, to my commitment to community and to my community's commitment to me. Uh, I, I consistently understand more and more why it is that Jesus didn't just die on the cross and just hand us a get out of jail free card or a certificate that says, now you're saved. Instead, Jesus died, gives us a spirit to intimately and individually transform us. But then he also gives us a bride. He gives us the church. He gives us community. Why? <laughs> so that transformation can continue to happen. I mean, it doesn't surprise me that Jesus, you know, gives us community because the Trinity has been a community for eternity. But I think sometimes I underestimate the value, the importance, the significance of community. As a matter of fact, um, there's a passage in Matthew chapter 7. So I'm still wrestling with the Sermon on the Mount. Um, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 6, there's a verse that I've always had preached to me in a way that was never satisfactory, especially given the context. Chapter 7, verse 6 says this, Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to swine, throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. And I've always been told that this passage has something to do with preaching the gospel. Like, don't just preach the gospel and give something as sacred and as valuable as the gospel just to the world around you because uh, they will ultimately trample it and trample you. And it always was just like this weird application of this verse. But the context of the verse actually isn't preaching. Anyway, let's go back to verse 1. You've heard this verse. I mean, as a matter of fact, this is one of like the most oft-quoted verses uh, by non-Christians and Christians alike today. Chapter 7, verse 1. Do not judge or you too will be judged. Now, I do think what it is saying is your job is not to damn someone. Your job is not to determine whether or not someone is in heaven or in hell. That's not your job. No, that's the judge's job. He says, listen, don't judge or you too will be judged. But usually people use that as an excuse for then you to never say anything that challenges what it is they're doing or believing or acting. And that's not what the text is saying. Because let's keep reading. It says, do not judge or you two will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Which hopefully then, the way in which we treat people, engage people, will be infused with a significant level of grace. Uh, because frankly, we all desire grace. We just struggle giving it, right? <laughs> then it goes on and it says this. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? I mean, why is it that you can be so hypercritical of your brother or your sister in Christ that you can see every flaw that they have, but you have this plank in your eye? This used to be one of my kids' absolute favorite texts. Because one Sunday morning, whenever it, we were all snowed in, we were, you know, everybody was divvied up with different jobs. And so my daughter, you know, led communion and my, one of my sons led music. And, and they asked me to tell a story and I told this one. And I tried to tell it the way um, I think that Jesus was actually saying it. And so I told him, I said, Jesus probably would have grabbed a staff and, and put it in his eye and would have went like this and, and maybe walked up to someone and clanked him in the head because there was this weirdness of looking at something that is so fine, so minute, so uh, uh, small <laughs> uh, as a speck of sawdust whenever you yourself are slamming people in the, fa in, in the face or in the head with the big log sticking out of your face. So he says, well, why do you do this? This is such a strange methodology. He says, how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank, a log in your own eye? <sighs> you hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye. And then you will clearly, you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Now, this is one of the things that people often overlook. Jesus begins the text by saying, don't kick people into hell. That's not your job. But as he goes on to the text, what he doesn't say is never, ever, ever uh, call out the flaws or the sins in your neighbor's life. No, he says, actually, there's a process to this. Pro first step in the process is look introspectively. 
get the stinking log out of your own face. Quit hitting people with it and actually deal with the sin that is not just blinding you, but hurting other people. Why? So that you can give them the gift of then helping them remove the speck of sawdust from their eye. So that then you can give them the gift of actually engaging what it is that they are doing that is damaging them and other people. Because you do understand that even a speck of sawdust can make you go blind. (laughs) It is still damaging. And it is our job as brothers and sisters in Christ to do the hard work of self-introspection, of self-repentance. So that we can offer ourselves whole We can offer our perspective clear to remove the sin and to remove the brokenness out of our brothers and sisters in Christ's life, the speck of sawdust. Like this is a description of community. How do you deal with community? You deal with it by being willing to have the conflicts that no one else will. You do it by fighting for the person, by first taking out all that is broken in you so that then you can help them to wholeness as well. But what it doesn't say is never be involved. What it doesn't say is you're not your brother's keeper. What it doesn't say is just because you don't kick them into hell, it doesn't mean you don't ever critique them at all. No, our job is by the grace that we have been given to give the same grace to our community, but to help them become whole in Jesus by us focusing on how we can become whole. And this beautiful gift of community where I'm fighting for you by emptying myself out. I'm fighting for you by fighting for my own repentance. This beautiful intimacy that is possible through the resurrection, possible through the Trinity, is as valuable as a pearl. As a matter of fact, the very next verse after he says, and then you will, clearly, you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye, he says, do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If they do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear tear you to pieces. Here's what I think the pearl is. Here's what I think the valuable thing is. Your responsibility of being a good member of the community. That is the pearl. That is what is valuable. The gift that you can give your neighbor is a clear perspective of what is breaking them and everyone around them. But when we don't take the opportunity to pull out the plank from our eye and help our neighbor with the speck of sawdust in their own eye, we entrust their brokenness to a broken world. And what I have typically found is what broken people do is break other people. So here is my challenge this week. Rip out all of the planks that are are clouding your vision so that you can serve the body of Christ by helping your brother and sister in Christ graciously remove the speck of sawdust in their own eye. I love you guys. I'll talk to you next week.